Well, welcome everybody. I am super honored to be hosting this webinar today with two very, very special guests, uh, Dr. Gifford Jones, who I'm sure many of you know of, maybe follow. He's been quite an icon in our industry and uh, is an amazing, amazing man. Um, and joining us is his daughter, Diana Gifford Jones. So just a little brief introduction on them. Dr. Gifford Jones is the author of nine common sense health books and has been writing a weekly syndicated medical column for nearly 50 years. A graduate at the University of Toronto and Harvard Medical School, he trained in general surgery at Strong Memorial Hospital, University of Rochester, Montreal General Hospital, McGill University and gynecology at Harvard. His storied medical career began as a general practitioner, a ship surgeon, and a hotel doctor. He saw his last patient at 87 years of age. And now at 97 years old, turning 98 this week on the 28th of February, he is still going strong as a journalist. His daughter, Diana, is now continuing his work, uh, bringing extensive international experience in health systems and policy. She is a special advisor to Aga Khan University including a new institute for global health and development and a brain and mind institute. Together they offer a wide array of lifestyle advice and insights on health related um, research. So this father daughter duo is here to speak to us about, about uh, disease prevention, about health, longevity, natural health products. I'm really excited for this talk today. It's gonna to be excellent. So I'm gonna hand the floor over now. Welcome Dr. Gifford Jones and Diana Gifford Jones. So pleased to have you with us. Very pleased to be here. Thank you so much. Yeah, so this is so much fun. And before we get started, I. I'm, I am, as the good daughter, going to defer to my dad to say a few words of welcome to. Dad, would you like to say a few words before we get started just about Hi, Diana. joining us on Zoom? <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> thanks for having me on this program, and uh, thanks to you, Natasha. And I see lots of smiling faces on the screen. Happy to meet, meet, meet all of you and have a little chat with you today. So let, let, let's get started. Sure, that's great. I'm I'm Diana, everybody, daughter of of uh, You know, he's been the star for 45 years uh, and longer. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about that legacy in a little bit. But um, uh, I, I want to thank all of you for taking a little time to be with us today for what I hope is a really fun and engaging discussion. Um, many people are, are joining, obviously, from Ottawa. Uh, given Natural Food Pantry is our host today. And maybe you don't know this, but I live uh, very close to Ottawa. I live in Merrickville myself. So um, while my father and I are very busy <laughs> um, uh, distributing our column across uh, North America, news and online, um, all around the world now, I have obviously a real special affinity for Ottawa where I've been living for the past uh, 15 years or so. And so that makes this kind of special. Um, I hope to see you in some of the natural food pantry stores at some point. And if Natasha will allow us, uh, I'll grab Giff in the car someday and drive up for a visit and hopefully you can come for a store visit. Um, so what we're gonna do today is with your permission, I'm gonna run you through a little bit of a presentation that I've prepared with my father. I have to ask your forgiveness because our internet speed might be a little bit slow on occasion, but that's part of the reality of today's Zoom world. So bear with us if we have a little lag between um, what I'm talking about and our slides, but we'll do our best and we'll have a good dialogue as we get going. So without further ado, I'm gonna share my screen and open up the presentation, which is here. And um, the, the, the discussion hopefully involving my dad more than me. Um, but as you may know, he's getting on uh, in years. Uh, my father will be turning 97 years of age uh, in about a week. So happy day to dad from, from me and I'm from all of you as he approaches this remarkable, uh, uh, you know, he, he's got a lot of experience and, and a, a lot of years to, uh, share his experience with us. So today's webinar is going to be fun and informative, I hope. Um, we're going to talk about that no-nonsense uh, approach that my father has taken for many years in his column, uh, guidelines for healthy living that we can all understand and live by, and 
as always, we have to remind you that we can't give people advice uh, over the course of the webinar, but we hope to give you lots of good, healthy advice that um, is useful to you. Most importantly, for those of you that have been following the column in the paper for so many years, I want to make sure you know about the website that we've launched. It's been there for many, many years, but it's recently been overhauled and it's a terrific resource of um, the columns that we've collected over the years, as I mentioned, 45 years of um, columns that are now, um, many of them posted on the website. We've got over a thousand columns posted there and we've got another 1,200 that will be probably launched on the website within the next three or four months. Um, so this is a terrific resource to everybody. And uh, that's a classic picture of my father in the room right next door to where I'm sitting right now. That's where he is at desk. That's the homepage for our, our website and uh, uh, gives you a glimpse of, of where I've been familiar with finding him all these years. Now, he's had this natural health philosophy for a long time and many of you are well aware of it, but as I start to work with my father more and more and hopefully introduce many new um, followers to what he's been speaking about all these years, I wanted to capture my father's natural health philosophy in a book. And this is the book that we published about a year ago. And it's a little um, collection of some of his most um, relevant columns to the natural health side of things. And that quote there on the screen that W. Gifford Jones has influenced complementary and alternative medicine like no other is from one of the industry leaders who I think very correctly that through father's writings over the years, he's really done a lot to explain to uh, Canadians and Americans that uh, natural approaches are amongst your best friends when it comes to your health, both in terms of prevention and treatment. And so this book captures, I think, some of those um, columns in, in, a, in a short collection. And there's nine other books that are also available on the website. And uh, what else? Dad, is there anything you want to add before I move on to on past your books? Anything you'd like to comment on at this point? I, I want to bring you into the conversation as much as possible. Nothing, Dad? I'm... I hope you can hear me okay. <laughs> can you hear me okay, Dad? Yes, I can hear you fine. Okay, I just wanted to know if there's anything you'd like to comment on about the books or this particular book or anything else that, um, because I, I'm conscious of the fact that if I if I keep rattling, no one wants to hear from me, they want to hear from you. So as I go from slide to slide, I want to see if I can find a way to include you in the discussion. Well, we've done a lot of books, and uh, hopefully they, uh, they give you a lot of common sense on, on a variety of topics. And uh, I think uh, rather than um, go uh, more in that direction, let's just continue on with, with, with your presentation. Okay, okay. So in the book, we talk about three principles. And the number one principle is the use of common sense. And this is a favorite quote of my father's that common sense is an uncommon commodity. And um, so in the book, we've got a few illustrations of uh, common sense principle for natural health. And on day two, you'll find there's a collection of columns that, that bring this message home. Uh, and with COVID-19 on everybody's minds these days, I wanted to be sure to call your attention to some of the the um, philosophies and the, the the guidance around common sense with COVID-19. One of the articles that we wrote recently was about stress and how our reactions to stress can be part of um, part of their the things that we're facing. And that again, you know, Diana, the 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 first the paragraph or the first sentence in the uh, in, uh, what you've written here. Don't underestimate the value of doing nothing. You know, we, we're, we're constantly, uh, with, with the COVID uh, uh, epidemic and, and, and all that goes along with it, great stress, you know, the, the, the loneliness of being shut in uh, day after day. And sometimes people are, they are alone, uh, no, no friends or, or, or relatives to, to help them. 
it, it, it's a good idea to say, look, I'm going, I'm going to take, take some time off and do nothing. Winnie the Pooh was right. Sometimes it's a good idea to just sort of shut yourself off from the world and, and just to relax. Just relax, yeah. Not easy to do. Dad, why don't you comment a little bit on your 10 cents a Dan column where you make a pretty strong case for natural approaches to fighting the virus? Yeah, I guess you know the people on 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 the show today who will remember the time when uh, you when during the war and uh, servicemen could go in and 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 get a dance with for, for ten cents or or nothing at that time. And uh, when when I went back on that thought, uh, I thought, well, what about if we if we increase it to twenty cents a dance? And, but it's not, it's not for the dent. <laughs> it's the fact that you can go into a health food store and for 20 cents, you can get vitamin C tablets, three of them, one, three times a day. You can also buy some vitamin D. You can also buy some uh, uh, zinc and magnesium. And for 20 cents, literally two minerals and two vitamins, you can decrease the risk of developing the coronavirus. And if you do get the coronavirus, you'll decrease the risk of, of uh, dying from it. Now, one of the great tragedies, one of the really great tragedies is that I have yet to hear a medical officer of health or an infectious disease doctor who is interviewed on television who they are, they're all saying, you know, be, be sure you wear, wear a mask, be sure you have social distances. But I've never had one of these doctors say, if you take two minerals and two vitamins, you can literally decrease the risk of this, of this pandemic. And I think that's a terrible tragedy. The, I think it's the worst tragedy of the entire, of the entire pandemic that these people are, I think people have, are literally developing the disease when they don't have to. And unfortunately, uh, there are some people who are dying who don't have to die. A second principle, I'm gonna keep going through the presentation because I wanna get where we talk with all of the participants on the call, but a second principle that has been, uh, that is a key part of this natural philosophy is to adopt a sound lifestyle from early life. And this picture I always enjoy much because this is my father, 94 years of age, Telling down the side of Toronto Hall in support of the Make-A-Wish Foundation, um, which he did uh, at that age simply because I think he's adhered to this principle <laughs> throughout his life, which make good choices early in life and stick with them. Diana, we lost your slide. So what does that mean? I can Sorry, tell you, Diana. Diana. Oh, pardon me. We've lost your slide. Oh, I want to make sure everyone sees that. Let me. Is that is that showing again now? No. Yes. We can, I so can, so I. I well, I okay. Well, All well, right. Well, well, Diana, while you're trying to find the slide, I can tell you the reason. Uh, I have a son who has been very socially conscious, and uh, uh, much involved in the Wish Foundation, and when I heard. He was going to uh, go down from the, from the city hall, uh, 300 feet. Uh, I said, "Look, you're you're really you've done a, a great job of uh, getting money for this organization, but I really think you've gone too far. I, I don't want to lose a son going, you know, falling down from from city hall." And uh, when it became apparent he was going to do it, I decided, "Well, if he's going to do it, I'll do it too." And uh, the, the only person who was, who was not very amused was my 65-year-old wife, who said, that's a damn fool thing to do. Don't do it. But anyway, we, we, raised, we did raise uh, a lot of thousands for the, for the Wish Foundation, which is a good thing. Yeah, it was good. That was good. All right, so I'll and I was going to look at the chat as we see, but maybe I'll rely on you, Natasha, to keep an eye on that chat for me and, and interrupt us if there's something uh, people want to jump into the conversation with. 
but but part of that um just to keep moving through the 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 idea is that you you've got to get the basics right and that includes things like having a healthy diet and and you you can see here i think that that side on the right it's so much more appealing is it not than the side on the left and while the side on the left may be fast and easy it's not the right choices for good health and and uh the same thing around um good drink i think is and the picture in the middle of a nice glass of water is important we all have to have lots of water during the day uh, but we've written articles on the importance of things like coffee, which sometimes gets a bad rap. Uh, and of course, Father has views on moderation in alcohol for many, many years now. And uh, a, a glass of rum at the end of the day is a part of his thing. Moderation, moderation in, all, in all things. And you know, the, uh, Sir William, Including, William Osler, uh, I think, had a good quote about, uh, about alcohol. He said, alcohol is for the elderly, what milk is for the young. And um, I think he was quite correct. Alcohol is uh, at the end of the day when you see all the damn fool things coming uh, to uh, uh, in the evening television news, you need a little relaxation. And if you drink moderately, okay. And in addition, it, the alcohol does increase the good cholesterol and um, also helps the, uh, the little, uh, when you have a blood clot, part of the blood clot is due to the accumulation of platelets. And if you take alcohol in moderation, uh, the platelets become more slippery, less likely to stick together, and therefore less likely to uh, cause a coronary, coronary death. So that uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a believer in, in alcohol, alcohol, as long as it's moderation. I wonder how many of the people who who are uh, who, who listening in on this uh, agree with me. <laughs> and I have a feeling no one is listening to me. I, I, I don't hear, I don't hear any, any response. We could, if we were more sophisticated, we could have a vote. I agree. <laughs> Good, now I've got one. <laughs> nice, I have two. <laughs> All right, there we go. So I'm back again. I got disconnected for a second, but I hope you can hear me again and my slides are back on again. Yes. All right, good. So um, this, this website uh, has a portion dedicated to lifestyle and that's the URL at the top. But what's also really kind of fun about this, um, this is a snap from our homepage of the website, and we call this the carousel section. And you can actually rotate this carousel across 30 or more different health topics. You can see here the lifestyle section in the middle, and to the right, the lung section, medicine, on the left side, infection and heroin, a topic that my father spent a lot of time writing about. All those little dots at the bottom represent different topics. Uh, so it's quite a useful tool that you can use to get quickly to articles that are most of interest to you. Now let's see if I can get this to go forward. Isn't that interesting? I just bear with me a second. Hang in there because I'm going to try something new. My, my computer's giving me a little bit of trouble here, but I'm just gonna move down here to this section here. So the, the third principle, hopefully you can see that there now, the third principle is to try natural remedies first. And this is also a, um, a picture that I, I laugh at a little bit because, oh no, look at that, isn't that awful? It won't let me do that. So I'm just gonna have to do this the hard way there. I'm just gonna show you this screen there. Um, this is a picture of natto, which is a Japanese food that uh, I adore because I spent some time in Japan and it's also uh, a, a kind of food that my father will not touch because he doesn't like the smell of natto. It's a little bit uh, uh, a smelly kind of substance, but it does, um, <laughs> It, it does it does illustrate the point that lots of good things for us are available in the food we eat and um, natto is an example of a fermented project product that uh, we recommend but 
the uh, vitamin C is really the main main focus of a lot of the work my father's worked on over the years to fight, you know, vitamin C to fight infection and for cardiovascular health. And I'm sure many of you would like to hear a little bit more about his views on the role of vitamin C for all kinds of infections and uh, for cardiovascular health. Well, I had a, I had a coronary when I was 74. And uh, if I had not uh, interviewed Dr. Linus Pollan uh, several years earlier, who was a Nobel Prize winner and a very smart guy, uh, I would have been taking cholesterol-lowering medication uh, for the last 23 years. And uh, the, the only people who were not amused were my, were my car cardiologists who said if I didn't uh, take cholesterol-lowering drugs, I more than likely would be dead in two or three years. But luckily, I'm still still alive, and, and the doctors who told me that uh, happen to be unfortunately dead. But uh, the 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 benefit of uh, large doses of vitamin C were pointed out to me by Linus Pollan, who said that he was convinced the the epidemic of cardiovascular disease, namely coronary attacks, was due to the fact we're all living in a low level of vitamin C. And study after study shows that a lot of people are just not getting an, enough vitamin C and not enough for cardiovascular disease. In other words, if you um, uh, are just looking about uh, trying to, to uh, uh, circumvent scurvy, you only need uh, 10 milligrams of vitamin C a day. And in an ordinary orange, uh, there, there's 60 milligrams, so that um, uh, the, it's Pollen used to say it's the dosage, stupid. It's the dosage. Uh, you, it's 10 milligrams will start stop you from getting scurvy, but if you want to, to circumvent a coronary attack later on in life, you need about 4,000 to 6,000 milligrams a day, and um, that means you should take it intermittently in the morning. At, uh, and, and at noon and in the evening, because vitamin C is water soluble. That means you are, every time you urinate, you're losing a little bit of vitamin C. So you keep a most constant volume of C if you take it three times a day. And the point is that uh, my, my Harvard professor didn't tell me this, but um, uh, Pollen did that animals all animals with the exception of the guinea pig and the fruit fly they all make vitamin C every day and your dog for instance or cat will be making uh, approximately 5,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day every day just because he's metabolically able to do so but uh, we unfortunately miss we, we're, we uh, eons and eons ago the, the gene that we need to make vitamin C, we lost it. And so now, uh, you, you know, who, who wants to, you can get a lot of vitamin C eating oranges, but you don't want to sit around, you know, eating oranges all, all, all day. So that's why we need a supplement of vitamin C to, to keep the arteries open. And also the lysine in the vitamin C in Medicine Plus, it keeps the arteries strong, just like you add steel beams to concrete makes the, the, um, the, the blood vessels uh, strong so that if you develop hypertension or you, uh, any other problem that is related to increased blood pressure, your artery isn't going to burst causing a stroke. So that's, that's the, the quick story about vitamin C. And uh, as I say, I've been taking 10,000 milligrams of C a day, and, and I'm totally convinced that that's the reason I'm going to reach 97 years of age. Dad, could you comment a little bit around this this sort of package and, and why, for example, the K2 is, is important if you're taking high doses of vitamin C? Yes, when, when the K2, and particularly when you're taking calcium, um, uh, K2 acts as like a... Uh, like, like a, a police, policeman who's directing traffic. Uh, it, K2 will direct the calcium that you get every day in your diet into bones rather than into arteries. And the reason you want them in the bones, of course, you want strong bones for, the, for, for many, many years. Uh, but if you, if you have 
uh, uh, calcium going into coronary arteries, it decreases the, uh, the uh, amount of blood flowing through the artery and also makes them more fragile, more likely to, to break, uh, rupture, uh, causing a stroke. So it's a combination of vitamin C along with lysine that, that's important, along with vitamin K2. And, and we've got the Medi-C uh, available in the calcium asorbate and the magnesium asorbate. So um, people can choose which one they might prefer to take. Would you have any comments on why someone might choose the calcium asorbate over the magnesium asorbate or vice versa? Yes, if you're, if you're not getting a lot of dairy products, it's good to take the calcium. Uh, our family has always been heavy on, on protein and, and dairy products so that I think in that case, the magnesium is better. Most people uh, uh, from studies that are done both Canada and the United States, they are very definitely lacking in magnesium. And magnesium is, you know, in all, all the years I've been in, in practice, it's, it's, there are many people that come into your, my office and say, uh, am I getting too much calcium or am I not getting enough calcium? I don't think I've ever had anyone come into my office saying, am I getting enough magnesium or not enough or too much? Magnesium is, is, is nature's uh, natural vasodilator. It, it keeps the, the, the arteries more rubbery. And of course, we have a rubbery artery that contracts and, and expands. Uh, it's much easier for the, for the, heart, for the, for the heart to pump the, the blood through through the artery, if you've got a rigid artery, that's when your hypertension goes up and, and more likely to stroke. So let's, let's look at this next slide here, which is another part of the heart health story, and that's the omega-3. Um, and, and this is a product that we've supported. We think this line is just terrific, the Certified Naturals line. And... Uh, well, um, as you recall, Diana, both of us were rather shocked. <laughs> Going back, I, I wrote an article many years ago uh, on, on the on Eskimos. And you, as we know, the Eskimos eat a lot of fat. And so if you eat a lot of fat, you're supposed to have a, more heart attacks. But when researchers did uh, the studies on Eskimos, they found out they, they were also not only uh, eating a lot of fat. They were eating 325 pounds of fish a year, all loaded with omega-3 acids. So that was that was what was saving them from coronary attack. So as you'll recall, we, we thought we had a lot of, of fish in our, in our household. We, we do eat much more fish than, than meat. And when you and I uh, uh, thought, well, they were, we're in awfully good shape, we'll get the omega-3 index done, which is a measurement of the amount of EPH or DPH of fatty acids you have in your body. And we were, we were really surprised to find out that we were, we were lacking in, in essential fatty acids. And uh, we, as you know, we went on omega 3x for, for, for several months, had the test done again, and now we're in the upper limit where we're less likely to have a heart attack. So we were, we were shocked that uh, our lifestyle, which we thought was so good, <laughs> wasn't good at all. And uh, uh, omega-3 is certainly uh, uh, something we have incorporated into our, our, our own daily diet now. I think what's what's really particularly interesting for me, at least, around this um, omega three acts is that it's what what some call pre digested form, so that m many oils, whether they're omega oils or any other kind of oils, will will go through our water based bodies quite readily, and and they're not absorbed. But this uh, Maximil formula has got a, a triglyceride that's been converted into a monoglyceride using enzymes that are are. At work before they before we take the uh, the pill, so so the the omegas are much more readily absorbed in our bodies, and I think that's what pre digest yeah. And and so when when my father and I did this uh, infra analysis, uh, we both set off of supplements for a period of time before we did that test. So we got a natural reading of our sort of base 
uh, that would be determined only by our diets. And that's what I, I think my father's saying was our readings were, were quite low. And then after 12 weeks of 3x, things were way in the health scales so that bodies were clearly absorbing much more of the, um, of the omega fish oils. So that's, that's one of the stories we're writing about, uh, as you can see there on the date, um, on the page there, we've got an article coming out on March 5th that we'll talk about that. Um, also for heart health is, is uh, Neo40, which is a, a product that... Uh, I have a hard job uh, listening to you, Diana. Um, if you're talking about Neo40 now, that's another good remedy to... Uh, to uh, cause uh, dilatation of the coronary arteries. Neo, Neo 40, uh, as we, uh, in early in our lives, we produce our own Neo 40. And uh, as we get older, Neo 40 uh, is increased in, 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 in uh, volume. And uh, uh, Neo 40 is needed for the for the uh, which is to produce uh, uh, the inside lining of the arteries produces neo 40 which dilates the arteries and of course if you have a dilated coronary arteries you're less likely to, to have a heart attack but after age 40 uh, there's very little neo 40 produced and um, this uh, is, is why uh, if you take one of these tablets a day it keeps the arteries dilated and less likely uh, you're going to die of a coronary. Why don't we just open it up for a discussion? And if anyone wants to ask, ask a question, we'd be happy to kind of have a dialogue. Absolutely. Does anybody have questions for Dr. There's some questions in the chat box. Um, so one of the questions was about um, zinc and magnesium. Somebody had asked what form of magnesium you recommend, Dr. Gifford Jones. Do you recommend citrate or biglycinate? Is there a specific? I, I, I use the mag, mag, magnesium triglyceride. There are various so, magnesiums uh, available, but that's the one I use. And do you recommend taking extra magnesium if somebody's taking the Medi C plus magnesium ascorbate? Do you think they're getting enough magnesium in that formula, or do you recommend that they take additional if, magnesium? If, if they take it, if they take it three times a day, they're getting enough magnesium. Yes. Oh, here's here's a wonderful question. I'd love to take in the chat from Beverly about just not to eat daily, and um, great question. We do make them ourselves. You can make them at home. So you can buy a bag of beans at a bulk store and cook up your soybeans. And you can um, uh, add a little bit of, uh, of yeast and then kickstart the, the fermentation process by putting them just, th just the right temperature in the oven uh, and then letting them sit for a few days. And you'll get beautiful natto beans that way. But it's for, I think, the most intrepid to try and produce it yourself. If you want to uh, be confident that what you're producing is what you're supposed to, you can buy. In, uh, natto beans are available at the at the tea and tea, um, and and they're very very tasty over warm rice with a little bit of soy sauce and even a raw egg mixed in is is what the Japanese people often do. So I recommend that. But you can make them at home. Natto is important for for bone health, as you know, Diana. It's a staple of the Japanese diet, and, and I. I I it became important in Japan when they found out that, yeah. that women that were living in a certain part of Japan had a high, had good, good, good bones, and they found out the reason for the good bone was with the NATO. Uh, and, but women in another part of Japan uh, were suffering from osteoporosis because they weren't getting enough NATO. So that's that's how how it started. But I, I would say, <laughs> I repeat it, it, it's not a nice way to get uh, uh, strong bones. And I think if you, uh, if you, if you, if you take to, you know, a lot, if you have really never had NATO before and you take some, you're more likely to need two drinks. <laughs> that would also offer uh, good probiotics for the gut. 
that was a topic of an article that we did recently an interview with an, a specialist on our website around the, the gut biome and how that gut biome influences your health, uh, both your physical health and in, increasingly worrying how it influences your mental health well. How about, how about does anybody have this for, for give about longevity and, and some of the, the tricks that he's adopted over the years to stay healthy for as long as he I, I think the secret of longevity, of course, is to uh, is to lead a good lifestyle, starting at an early age. And and some people, I I wrote, I remember writing a, a column years ago, uh, saying that re religion and religion and medicine uh, have have little in, in common, because uh, I can be a real scoundrel all my life apparently and if I if I um, uh, repent my sins at the early gates I'm told I will I can be more likely uh, allowed into the kingdom of heaven but medicine isn't like that uh, there, there, you, you can't repent your sins at the end you've got to start living a good lifestyle early in life follow it all the way through and uh, your 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 chance of longevity, and not and it's not just longevity. It's the it's the great tragedy, you know. Is more things can happen to you that are worse than death, and one of them is chronic disease. If you develop a chronic disease from a lack of a good lifestyle, right, whether it be arthritis, where you're in pain day after day after day. Um, the, uh, the, certainly, uh, uh, the only way to get around that is to exercise and, and eat the right foods and take your vitamin C's and, and all the other good things you can do, take from from the natural remedies. People, are, people, for instance, are ruining their their their, their kidneys these days. The, the number of people who are on renal dialysis is going up year after year. And um, this means they, they ruin their kidneys, not by uh, t uh, taking uh, food, but by taking pills, uh, painkillers, and, and, and a variety of other, other pills. Natural remedies, the body is, is used to, to, uh, to uh, metabolizing natural remedies. But when you talk in terms of, uh, of, uh, uh, of prescription drugs, uh, if you take too many of them, you're going to uh, ruin your kidneys and end up on renal dialysis and, 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 and possibly a need for an artificial kidney later on in life. So that it's, 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 it's the sum package of all the bad things you do. You know, there's a Gifford Jones law that says one bad thing leads to another bad thing, another bad thing, another bad thing. And, and the best example of that is uh, people who become uh, really overweight. They almost invariably develop type 2 diabetes. And if you have, uh, if you develop type 2 by diabetes and, and go on, on cholesterol lowering drugs, you've got a 50% chance of dying of a coronary. So here we, here we go where the very drugs that you, you are, are, are supposed to, to decrease the risk of a coronary actually in the end sometimes cause a coronary. So that it's getting back to uh, living a good lifestyle. One of the ways of going to live a good lifestyle is to say no to, to, to going into a the pharmacy and saying, I, 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 want, I want a pill for this and a pill for that because they're not supposed to be in any pain at all. There's a question here, Dad. Somebody indicated that they're going in for a colonoscopy on Friday yeah. and they find it very nerve wracking. <laughs> Well, you know, it, Which I don't it, it's, got a bad, it, it's got a bad reputation, and I would be the first one to say that if you're going to have a colonoscopy, you have to have a, a little bit of, not, not bad pain, just a little, little bit of pain. To give you an example, uh, whenever I get a colonoscopy, I, I arrange to go into the, to the doctor's office at 8 o'clock in the morning, so I can be the first one to have a colonoscopy. And I'm in my and, and after the colonoscopy, 
I've gone back to my office seeing patients at nine o'clock. So it, uh, yes, you have a little bit of discomfort, but it, it, it's great, greatly over exaggerated. And plus the fact, I can tell you for sure, dying of a colon cancer is a hell of a lot more painful than having a colonoscopy. I think the worst, the, the, uh, the worst thing that can happen to you is to de deny the symptoms that you see. I, we had a, a good friend of mine who, uh, who, who said to me one day, you know, I had a little, little re uh, rectal bleeding. I said, well, look, you've got to get, you've got to immediately get a colonoscopy done. And he said, they're not going to do, they're not going to do that to me. And I said, well, <laughs> they don't do it to you. Something may be, uh, may, may, it may not be, it may not be hemorrhoids. It may be a cancer of the bowel. And uh, he uh, was a wealthy guy. And uh, in the end, he was going to Germany, going to Mexico on, on phony treatment, trying to keep alive and finally died. All, it could have been totally, totally uh, circumvented uh, if the colonoscopy had been done. Never, never, never say I'm not going to have a colonoscopy because it's a little painful. It's not that painful. Dad, you touched on um, going to see the colonoscopy, getting your colonoscopy done at 8 o'clock in the morning, and it reminded me of all the things you've said over the years about choosing your surgeon and what, what day of the week you want to get your surgery on, or I, I can't what time of day, you. and what are the factors that sh people should consider when they're going in for surgery? Well, let, let me tell you, <laughs> here, here, here's a great piece of advice for you. If, if you're going to yeah. require surgery, don't make some terrible mistakes. The first mistake is that uh, you may want it done at, at a hospital near you because it's, uh, it's convenient. So, my, so you can have visitors to see you. But if the doctor who is going to do the operation lives a 50 miles away or wherever, take the time to go the 50 miles away and have it done by the surgeon who is recommended to you. But how do you, how do you people know uh, a surgeon is good, bad, or indifferent? You don't. You have not a clue at all. But let me tell you one thing that if you're lucky enough to know a scrub nurse, and a scrub nurse is a nurse that, that, that uh, uh, hands you the instruments during surgery. And so she not only sees you operating, but she sees dozens of other doctors operating in the course of, 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 her, of her, uh, her, her time as a script nurse. And if she tells you that Dr. X is the, the best surgeon to go to, believe her. And I tell you, if you go to that surgeon that she's recommended, and he's got the personality of Dracula, don't worry. It's not the brain or his personality that's operating on you. It's his skilled hands. And surgery is a is a is a technical business. It's look. If I'm a plumber, and I'm fixing been fixing pipes for ten years, and I'm good at it, and then the other person uh, you know is a bad plumber, you always go to the good plumber. Practice makes. Practice makes perfect, and uh, uh, there's no better. If, you, if, you, if you're lucky to know a scrub nurse, believe me, and ask her opinion, who, who is the best surgeon? And, and, and the best advice I could give you today. Someone else in the chat is asking if you can comment about bone health. I know that's a topic that you definitely uh, speak on and write about. Yes, bone, bone health is, in, is very important because you know by the time we, by the time most of us reach seventy years of age, unless we're very careful, we've lost forty percent of our bone mass. And uh, the best way to look at uh, bones is look at it from the standpoint of being a banker. Uh, if we want to have enough money to retire uh, later on in life, we've got to have enough money to pull out of the bank. And that means you've got to save money all your life to, to get enough to, to, to retire on. In the, in the same way, uh, and unless you start uh, building up bone mass 
as you get older, as you get as you gradually get older, you're not going to have it later on, so that your bones literally will end up like um, like cottage cheese, lots of holes in them, and and of course at that time you're you're liable to uh, to get a fracture. It can be a very ser serious fracture and and uh, in, a, in a lot of trouble. Um, so that uh, we we got to make certain in there in early on in life that we're getting enough calcium, and we're also uh, getting enough K2 to, to put the calcium into in the, in the bones. And um, that's why I take uh, 100 micrograms of, of uh, K2 daily uh, so that uh, my, I, my calcium goes into the bones and my teeth and not into the coronary arteries. The other thing you, you, you about about bone health, uh, if you um, let's suppose someone uh, loses a, an arm from a traumatic accident and only has one uh, arm left, that arm will be used much much more than if he, he had two arms. And if you get a, take an X-ray of that bone after several years, you'll find that the bone has increased markedly in, 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 in size. In other words, exercise. Exercise certainly builds up bony structure. Keep walking. Don't take, don't take the car to the, to, the, to the local store. Can I you have, hear me okay, Dad? I have right here. Yeah, show you us what you've got right there. <laughs> what do you see? See, see the little, uh, little uh, that's, that's, uh, that's a pound weight. So, when I'm writing a column, uh, every hour or two or three, I'll uh, take one of these and take take two of them, and, and then and go like that, like that, and put put out here, and uh, so build up build up the muscles. The interesting thing is, if you don't do that, sometimes later on in life, you can't get off the toilet. Very important. Very important. There are a lot of people who are so so lost so much muscle they literally cannot get off the toilet later on in life. Great demonstration. Can you hear me okay? I've switched to a different microphone now. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. All right. Um, I, I just want to acknowledge, uh, I can see a couple people who are with us who have been longtime readers of, of the column and now on our e-newsletter that we send out every Tuesday. And I'd like to thank those, uh, especially the ones that write in and uh, these are individuals who I think have been uh, with us every week religiously, uh, sometimes sending a, a very supportive note back, which we appreciate. And there's others on the on the uh, call as well that I'd like to I'd like to thank for giving us some inspiration each week to keep going. Any other questions? I'm wondering if you'll share how much vitamin C, Medi C, you take a day. How much I take a day? I take 10,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day. And I take it in divided doses. You must take it in divided doses because it's water soluble. For instance, vitamin A and D are fat soluble. So I could literally take uh, the, the, my month's supply in, in one day if I wanted, because it, the vitamin D and A would be stored in your liver. And uh, most people are, are lacking in vitamin D. And matter of fact, there is um, there's a, there was a doctor in England, a researcher, who recently made the remark that if you take 4,000 milligrams of vitamin D daily for three months to build up your vitamin D supplies, and then switch down to just taking 3,000 milligrams a day, that you literally, he says, you, it, it guarantees you, you would not die from the coronavirus. And uh, that's a pretty dramatic statement about that. But that's what uh, that, uh, vitamin D is, uh, we, we've got to take more vitamin D and C and zinc and magnesium to build up our immunity to, to, to the coronavirus. I, I think with these, 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 these variants that are starting now, uh, they're not going to go away. They, they may be coming back uh, at irregular intervals. And the only way to, to beat it 
is to, to make sure you've got a damn good Im immunity. And uh, I don't know any way better than taking 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day uh, intermittently and uh, 400 milligrams of magnesium and about 30 to 40 milligrams of zinc and, uh, and, and, and vitamin D, 3,000 milligrams. It's a, it's a great combination. And uh, I, say, I, I repeat what I said earlier. It's a great, great tragedy that, that this has not been um, stressed by uh, people who should know better. One, one of the things I'd like to add, everyone that's on the call, is that, you know, for, for many years, my father's been fighting the good fight on behalf of um, common sense health. And if you've been following him for a long time, you'll remember back in the 70s when he was doing a lot of work to legalize heroin for terminal cancer patient use, pain management issues that's continued on to, up to through today, uh, working on issues of medical assistance in dying. And this whole issue around natural health and access and support for, uh, and legislation in support of, of natural approaches. and this discourse around the coronavirus that is making uh, it very difficult for some people to speak out on issues of um, you know, prevention and all the things we should be doing around diet and exercise and sleep and natural vitamin C and vitamin D and so on, magnesium and zinc as a formula for boosting your immune system. Um, many, many of the voices on these issues are being silenced. And so what we really need all of you to do is to um, not only, you know, stay with us on the mailing list, but actually encourage your friends and contacts to join us on our, on our mailing list as well, because unlike the stores that are often seen as sort of biased and um, uh, working to promote products, a, a voice like my father's voice over the years has just been a good independent perspective on the issues. We, we do our best to translate the research to circulate what, what good information that is available and um, so, you know, the more people we have along with us, uh, the better. And the more you send us reader mail that we can use, the better. So please be engaged and be active and uh, tell your friends to join us on our, on, sign up on our website. And uh, we'd be really grateful for that. There seems to be a general uh, uh, antagonism towards natural remedy by the medical profession, unfortunately. And uh, it, it, it's, it's a shame because the, uh, they, they, we, nat natural medicine and, and conventional medicine can go hand in hand because we, 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 we both need conventional medicine and, and, uh, and natural remedies. Um, but unfortunately, vitamin C has taken a bad rap and so is B, the whole the whole gamma of the natural remedy, and it, it just shouldn't be. But uh, you have to say it, it is what it is, <laughs> and uh, and try to do the best you can to uh, to uh, to give at least the other side of the story. And as I just, as we all know, you can. I said I think I think earlier you can go into a health food store. You know you're not going to get into any trouble. But going to a doctor's office, sometimes you can be in a lot of trouble. So is there, I think maybe we'll just take one or two more, uh, ask you for any final of course, sort of issues that we've neglected to comment on, or is there anything else that you'd like to hear from GIF on? We'll give you one last chance here to throw something up in the chat or to wave at us. Or uh, Natasha, if you've seen anybody raising their hands or anything like that, let me know. I haven't been able to check on that. Otherwise, we'll keep you uh, we'll keep you posted on uh, on all these issues in the column that we will continue um, for as long as you'll continue to have us popping up in your inboxes. And I I should also tell you that we have a new for for your kids and your grandkids and for all of you too. If you are keeping up with today's digital age, we are um, we have launched a new uh, Instagram account. Of course, we're on Facebook. GIF has an account on Facebook and on uh, Twitter. Uh, we're now on Instagram as well, and so um, it's a terrific way to get your kids kind of thinking about their own natural health uh, or their, their approach to their health as well. Um, to follow GIF on, uh, on social media, it's fun and uh, 
and we're, we're including really wonderful, what they call flashback Fridays on Instagram, where we post some pictures that are uh, illustrating Gift's career over the years and old columns from the, the 70s and 80s and 90s, which are uh, many of them still ringing true today. Uh, so please join us on that platform if you're interested. Things have changed over the last 70 years or 80 years. Or... <laughs> so, so if, and in order to do this, you have to know how to get to GIF on Instagram. And the, the name of his Instagram handle, I guess, as it's called, is at DocGIF. So at the at symbol and then D-O-C-G-I-F-F. And our website, of course, is DocGIF.com, D-O-C-G-I-F-F.com. And if you sign up there, you'll get our e-newsletter in your inbox on Tuesdays. Yes, we would like, we'd like to have more and more people sign up for the website because that gives you uh, a lot more fun to have uh, more people uh, there. And we've got several thousand now, but it should be more. We've also, um, we've got most of the books are available. Uh, well, not all of them, the, the, the books that are out of print are hard to get your hands on these days, but my father's memoir has just been posted on our website as an ebook. Uh, so that's available as well. And if for anyone, um, you know, the price is out of reach, then just ping me, let me know, uh, and we'll make sure you get a copy. Uh, the point is to, to make people aware of the, uh, the work that my father's done, not to, we do appreciate the, the purchase of the books where you can to help us keep the cost of the website and things like that going, but we'll make them available to you if you need to, if you'd like to read them. Um, I can see in the chat here now that there are a lot of notes are coming in to say happy birthday gift and, uh, and, and thanks from everybody. So I think what I'll do at this point is I'll hand it back to Natasha for any final words, but thank you to all of you that have been so generous with your time and, and I appreciate um, you sticking with us uh, for the, the time we've had today and we look forward to being in touch with you online or on the e-newsletter. E thanks so much. Yes, thank you both for joining us. That was fantastic. I know we had some tech issues, but the information was so valuable. And we did record this for everyone, so we'll send you a link to the recording once it's uh, once it's been published. Um, love to have you back as well. And yes, you're getting so many comments, so many happy birthday wishes, Dr. Gifford Jones, and uh, and compliments, Dr. Gifford Jones rocks. <laughs> Darren says that you rock. <laughs> and, and for sure, Natasha, as soon as we're able, I really would be glad to uh, do something in the store with anyone that wants to, and, and hopefully very soon we will be able to meet up again in the stores. I'd it would like, be wonderful I'd to like, have something I'd, in person for I'd, sure. Diana, I'd, I'd like, Diana, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. I'd like to get on the train or drive up to Ottawa and uh, see some people in, 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 the, in the food stores. And, and everybody, um, you know, some of you are not in Ottawa too. <laughs> some are at further reaches and we have talked about doing another cross country tour and wouldn't that be wonderful if we could see Gifford Jones um, making some uh, cross Canada tour on Via Rail. <laughs> we're looking into that possibility as well. So stay tuned. We were going, we were going to do it when the, when the, uh, the virus struck. Yeah, yeah, we were, we were going to do it then. Yeah, so we're game, we're game Canada. Natasha, thank you so much for having us. Happy to have you all here.